Thank you for joining us for online worship here at Stebbing PH Church. And even though we can't be together right now, this song says that wherever you are or wherever you go, the Spirit of God is right there with you. Let's sing this song together this morning. glad that you decided to join us today. You know, Sundays are like the only day that I know what day it is. Most of the time, I don't have a clue. Having online church with all of you is the one thing that distinguishes this day from any other day. I'm also not that great about going outside every day. I have no idea what the weather is like outside, don't know if the sun is shining, any of that. 
Yesterday, I decided to take the kids outside for some fresh air to get some energy out. I had not stepped foot outside my door. So I checked my weather app just to see what it was like, make sure it wasn't raining or gonna rain. And it said it was sunny and 85 degrees. I couldn't believe it. I grabbed the kids, put them in their swimsuits as fast as I could, got their kiddie pools out, filled them with water and grabbed popsicles from the freezer. It was not until I saw the kids shivering with goosebumps and blue lips that I realized it is not 85 degrees. I double checked my weather app just to see what happened. I had that thing set to Orlando, Florida. We do not live in Orlando. <laughs> so I guess I had vacation on the brain. I just told the kids that it was a polar bear plunge and they thought that that was wildly fun. I promise I'm not completely lost. I did make it here today and I'm so glad that you did too, that you knew it was Sunday and that you decided to join us for church. If you are new, let me encourage you to fill out our virtual connect card on our website. This is the best way to get plugged in with our church. You can also find on our site, a virtual prayer request card. Fill that out, let us know what your need is and someone from our prayer team will reach out to you. You can also continue to give tithe and offering and you can do that online as well. We have a place for you to give safely and securely on our website 24 seven. If you prefer, you can mail a check to the church and the address is below. This week on Tuesday, we're having another coronavirus collections drive. We're collecting non-perishable food items, paper products, toiletries, and other essentials that we can give to be a blessing to those in need within our community. You can drop off on Tuesday between 12 and two at Camp Sandy Creek, which is across from our worship center. There will be volunteers in place to take your donations at that time. If you come any other time, there will be bins available where you can leave the items. This is a great way for us to be a blessing to those in our community, to reach out, to give, and to show the love of Christ. So I encourage you to participate with us. I thank you again for being here today. I hope you enjoy our service and that you have a great week. Welcome to Sunday Online at Stedman PH Church. Man, we are glad that you've joined us today. Wherever it is that you are watching from, whenever it is that you are watching, we want you to know that we're glad that you took time out of your busy schedule to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I am uh, excited. I'm constantly hearing from individuals in our congregation who are you know, reaching out to me. They connect to me. They text me. They somehow reach out and email me, and they let me know, man, I am so excited about the online services, but I will be so ready to get back into the house of the Lord on Sundays. Here we are in the midst of a pandemic. Here we are in the midst of a, a, uh, a uh, quarantines that are keeping us locked down, so to speak, and preventing us from being able to do some of the things that we enjoy doing, including being able to fellowship together in the house of the Lord. And it's because of that that I just want to talk to you today because there's when I hear those texts and I uh, read them and I see them, here's what I began to gather. I begin to gather that there's just something about Sundays. There is just something about Sundays. Powerful things happen on Sundays. Lives are transformed on Sundays. Burdens are lifted on Sundays. We can be in the midst of praise and in worship and the music is going and the singers are singing and the choir is just echoing out and all of a sudden people's lives are being transformed on Sundays. People come to faith on Sundays. And it's not that powerful things can't happen on other things, days of the week. It's not that Jesus can't transform lives on other days of the week. It's not that Jesus himself can't lift burdens on other days of the week. And it's not that people can't come to faith in the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, on other days of the week. It's just that today I'm here to encourage you in this, that there is just something about Sundays. And the setting for our gospel story today is on a Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday, and we make a big deal about Sundays because Jesus makes a big deal about Sunday. So I want you to hear the gospel of our Lord today from Luke chapter 24 and starting at verse number 13. And the Bible says that the same day two of Jesus' followers 
were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing Jesus. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus. The man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priest and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them, Jesus is alive. And some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, the body was gone just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And by this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So we went home with them. And as they sat down to eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, Jesus disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word today. There's just something about Sundays. And one of the big things that happens on Sundays that I love is people come to faith on Sundays. People believe in Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior, on Sundays. It's not the only day, obviously, that people come to faith in Jesus Christ, but it is something about Sundays. Jesus seems to set a pattern for his Easter community on Sundays. The first followers came to believe in him on Sundays. Our three gospel stories over the last three weeks, including today, have all been set on a Sunday, two of them on that first Easter Sunday and one of them on the Sunday following Resurrection Sunday. And in all three stories, Jesus appears on Sundays and the people believe in his resurrection. Let me tell you something I believe. I believe that too often we take Sundays and Sunday worship for granted. But I want to remind you that the setting for most persons to come to faith in the resurrected Christ is in Christian worship when we gather together as the people of God, and in particularly, particular when we come together on Sundays as the body of Christ. Listen, you and I both know that worship of the resurrected Jesus doesn't stop on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. We also know that witnessing doesn't stop on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. But what we do understand and what we do recognize is there is something special. Jesus has set a pattern in motion for that Easter community that lets us know Sunday is something different. 
And the typical setting for most persons to come to faith in the resurrected Christ is in Christian worship. That's why we cannot take Sunday worship for granted. You know, when this pandemic is over and the quarantines have been lifted, believers themselves, followers of Jesus Christ, cannot take Sundays and Sunday worship for granted. Worship in the house of the Lord. And that's what we see in our gospel story today. We see three reasons that believers cannot take Sunday worship for granted. And the first reason that believers can't take Sunday worship for granted is because it takes divine revelation for people to come to faith. It takes divine revelation for people to come to faith. The two men on the road to Emmaus, on the move to Emmaus, didn't have a self-revelation of the resurrected Christ. They had a divine revelation of the resurrected Jesus. And that divine revelation showed up when Jesus appeared. We know that the Bible says to us that their, their eyes, they did not recognize the resurrected Jesus even though they were his followers, even though they had just three days earlier seen him alive. They know what he looks like. But for whatever reason, their eyes could not recognize that it was the resurrected Jesus Christ. Maybe it was just because of the fact that they, in their minds, knew he's dead, this can't be him. One of the reasons, as a believer, that you cannot take Sunday worship for granted is because your presence actually helps manifest the presence of Christ that unbelievers need to see. Your presence actually helps manifest the presence of Christ that unbelievers are needing to see. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 18 and 20. He said, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. In other words, Jesus is manifest when we are together, when we are in groups of two and three, when we're in small groups, when we're also in large groups, when we come together and we collectively worship together in the house of the Lord. There's something about it that Jesus says, I'm in the midst. I will be manifest in the midst, but you've got to be there too. That's what Jesus says. Your presence combined with the presence of other believers manifests the presence of the resurrected Jesus in our Christian worship. And when the manifest presence of the resurrected Jesus is in our midst, unbelievers come to believe in him. The natural man just cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. We need to understand that. The natural man cannot comprehend and understand the things of the Spirit without divine assistance. That's why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 14, for the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. And so with that, it took divine revelation for even the first disciples to believe on that first resurrection Sunday. It was true for Mary. It was true for Peter. It was true for Thomas. And it was true for these two believers on the road to Emmaus that day. Why is it that some people believe and others do not? I've often asked myself, asked myself that question. Why is it that some believe and others do not when they hear the gospel message? Martin Luther explained it all so well in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed in his small catechism. There Luther says, we cannot believe by our own reason or our own strength. It is by the Holy Spirit that one comes to believe. So one of the first reasons we as believers cannot take Sunday worship for granted is because our collective presence manifests the presence of Jesus to unbelievers. A second reason, however, that believers cannot take Sunday worship for granted is because it takes divine gatherings for people to come to faith and to also have their faith nurtured. There's just something about Sunday. That's one of the reasons that even since the first Sunday I got here probably four and a half years ago, one of the things that I said right off the bat was Sundays aren't the same without you. Because when you are missing, there's an element, there's a dimension of the manifestation of the body of Christ that is not there in the midst like it is when you are present. The setting for most persons to come to faith in Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior, is Christian worship. And Christian worship includes three things, scripture, proclamation, and sacrament. Scripture, proclamation, and sacrament. 
This is where all of us in the faith are sustained. It's the place where Jesus continues to reveal himself, is in the midst of our collective gatherings. When we hear the scripture and we hear it proclaim the gospel message and we receive the sacrament. See, the Christian faith is born and nurtured where people share in worship through the word, through gesture, through earthly means, just like we'll receive in a few moments when we partake of the the bread and the cup. Even the mutual care that we give to one another is something that expresses and manifests and nurtures ourselves in Jesus Christ. And there are three basic elements that are needed for a person to come to faith and to be nurtured in the faith. And they are found in our worship services. And we actually see it in the story right here with Jesus and these believers, these individuals, two men on the road to Emmaus. We see three things that happen. And as a result of that, it happens on a Sunday. And because it happens on a Sunday, it sets the pattern for us in worship. We've got the interpretation of Scripture If you look at verse number 27, it says, Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then he proclaimed the gospel story to them. The Bible says in verse number 25, Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe. All the prophets who wrote in the scriptures, wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering into the glory? Jesus interprets the scripture. He proclaims the gospel. And then the last thing he does, which is so beautiful, is when they get to Emmaus and they invite him to come in the house, they're the ones who are the host. They're hosting Jesus. All of a sudden, Jesus takes over as the host. And Jesus begins to break the bread and bless it. And the Bible tells us it was at that moment that their eyes would open, uh, were open and they recognized Jesus was in their midst because they had remembered what he had done on that night before his crucifixion. Those are the elements that take place when we're in the house of the Lord together. There is the interpreting of Scripture If we're not in the house of the Lord hearing the interpretation of Scripture, what often happens is we are left to our own devices and our own understanding and interpretations, independent interpretations of Scripture. That's why we need the church. That's why we need to be in the house of the Lord. We also need to hear the gospel proclaimed. People who are unbelievers here need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ proclaimed. And those who are already believers need to hear it again so that their hearts are continually encouraged. And then finally, we need that time where we are together in the communion of saints and we are sharing in the Holy Eucharist, breaking of the bread together. So a second reason that we as believers cannot take Sunday worship for granted is because it takes divine gatherings for people to come to faith and be nurtured in their faith. So a third and a final reason believers cannot take Sunday worship for granted is this, is because it takes divine movement by the church for people to come to faith. Today's gospel story is one of movement. I like movement. I, like, I, I don't like a lot of grass growing underneath neath my feet. I like movement. And what's beautiful is that in the story today, it contains at least nine, really ten verbs describing movement. We look at the two men, the, in 24 and 13, it says, the two men are going. The Bible says to us in verse 15, Jesus came near and went with them. Action verbs. Verse 28, they came near Emmaus. 28 again, Jesus walked ahead of them. Verse number 29, Jesus went in to stay with them. Verse 31, Jesus vanished from their sight. Verse number 33, the two men got up and returned to Jerusalem. And then when they get to Jerusalem, we learn in verse number 35 that they began to tell about what they had experienced when Jesus had been walking with them and when he broke the bread. And all of those things happened on a Sunday. Some of the verbs tell us about the movements of Jesus. Some of us tell about the men who are on the way to Emmaus. But the fact is that both of them speak of being on the move, followers being on the move. And that's what it means to be the church. It means to be on the move, even on Sundays, and especially on Sundays. The series of sermons that we are in right now is actually called On the Move, Joining Up with Christ's Easter Revolution. When we read about the the brand new Easter community in the Gospels, and we read about it especially in the book of Acts, we read about a people 
on the move. I want you to just grasp how this people was on the move as we close this out this morning. Because the reality of it is, is that they, there were 120 in the upper room. And when, when, a, when 50 days after Jesus Christ had been resurrected, all of a sudden what takes place is 50 days later, they go from 120 believers to 3,000. And then not long after that, they jump to 5,000. And then sociologist Rodney Stark from Baylor University, he estimates that the global Christian population in 120 years after the resurrection had expanded to 40,000. And then 50 years after that, it expanded to 218,000. And then 50 years after that, in the year 8250, the Christian population was up to 1.2 million people. Why did the Christian population explode so fast? It's because the Easter community, the church, was on the move with the message that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he is Lord. That's the simple message. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit, and that's the message they delivered. And that's the message that we share with you right now. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. In the 20th century, there was a song that was written that for years the Christian church has sung. It's the song that is entitled, He is Lord. It's a simple course. It simply says, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But I like it. I like what goes on with the next verse. We often don't hear it sung in churches, but it says this. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he's my Lord. My knee shall bow and my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Here's a song that was written in the 20th century, but it perfectly reflects the message of the first century Easter community. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. And as a result of that, today, the Easter community, the global church of the Lord Jesus Christ, is estimated to be at 2.3 billion people. One-third of the world's population has bowed their knee and confessed with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Here we are, 2,000 years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One-third of the world's present population is part of the Easter community. Why? Because the church has been on the move. The church is on the move in 2020, even right now, calling people to join up with the Easter revolution, calling people to bow their knee and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's what I'm inviting you to do today. I'm inviting you to get in on this move. I'm inviting you to become part of the Easter revolution. I'm inviting you to make a decision to say, you know what? I am going to confess with my mouth, and I am going to bow my knee and bow the knee of my heart and bow it before Jesus Christ and confess that he is Lord. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm saying to you who are listening to me today, you may have just stopped by here and you thought it was by accident. I want to tell you it's by providence that God had you stop because he wanted you to have the opportunity to hear the gospel message proclaimed and for you to hear the simple message that simply says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. But I'm also speaking to another group of people. I'm speaking to those who are already saints and I'm speaking to you who are watching today and you're watching from the confines of your home or watching from the confines of your car and you're not able to be in the house of the Lord. And I want to say to you that when the quarantines are lifted, the pandemic is through, that when it's time to get back into the house of the Lord, that's the message for you today. You and I can't take meeting in Sundays and Sunday worship for granted because it's how the church has exploded to the place that it is today. And Jesus Christ is going to come back, and we want people to be ready. And you and I being in the house of the Lord causes the manifestation of Jesus Christ to be present in such a real way that people can make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So right now, I'd like to ask you just to, I want to pray with you. You might want to bow your heads. If you don't, that's okay. But I just want to pray a prayer with you, and I'm going to pray two things. I want to pray for those that are already believers. And I want to pray that you and I 
when the quarantines are lifted, we'll take a brand new, serious, and fresh approach to not taking for granted the house of the Lord and Sunday worship. And then I want to invite others to become believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, right now, I just thank you for this time that we've had. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the the word that's been in song that we've heard earlier. We're here again right after this. I thank you for the, the word that has been spoken and preached. I thank you for the written word that has been read and proclaimed for the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that incredible, beautiful bread that we will break in just a few moments together as we share the Holy Eucharist. And Lord, I pray now that you will cause a fresh revival to fall upon your church. Lord, those of us who are already believers, but perhaps have stepped back from understanding that there really is a dynamic at work when we are in the house of the Lord, we actually are the people who are manifesting your presence. Your presence is real when we are here. And unbelievers begin to sense that and are convicted and drawn to salvation. So, Lord, we ask you to seal that in our hearts. Prepare us for the day that we will come back together again in this sanctuary. And, Lord, when we do, may we continually make sure that it is flow overflowing every single week. Revive us, O oh Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Now, for those of you who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ, I want to say to you, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I come to you today, and I thank you for opening my eyes right now to the preaching and the teaching and the reading and the singing of the Word of God. And I come to you, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From this day forward, I receive you into my heart, into my life. Live through me, and I will follow you in the power of the Holy Spirit. No turning back. Amen. Amen and amen. Man, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to know something. We are excited. We welcome you to the family of God. We want you to find a place to get connected. If you're not close enough to get connected with this church, we want you to find a good Bible-preaching, believing church and get into that church. But if you're in this area, we invite you to let us know that you've made a decision for Jesus Christ. Even if you're outside of this area, there's an address down at the bottom that allows you to be able to let us know you made a decision for Jesus Christ. Don't keep it to yourself. Let us know that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior and that you're following him from this day forward. We just want to say to you that if you've made a decision for Jesus Christ, here's the exciting news. In just a moment, we're going to be singing a song of praise, an incredible song about our awesome God. But Immediately after that, we are going to be receiving the Lord's Supper. We invite you to be a part of receiving the Lord's Supper as well. Let us know you made a decision for Jesus Christ. And the final thing that we say to you is, hey, get in a small group. Right after this, there's a guide right there on our website that you can follow along, and it builds on the Sunday sermon. We invite you to be a part of that. God's blessings on you. Enjoy this time of participating in worship right now in this next song, and then we'll be right back to receive the Lord's Supper together.
special part of the conclusion of our service today, the time in which we partake of the Lord's Supper. It's a time where not only our congregation comes together and partakes of the sacrament, but it's a time in which we fellowship with the communion of saints worldwide. And so as we do this today, we just want to say to you that it's an awesome privilege that God has given to us through Jesus Christ to be able to fellowship in the presence of the Holy Spirit through the partaking of the bread and the wine. And so today, as we prepare for this, I'd like to invite you to join me in saying the Our Father and in praying the Lord's Prayer. Would you join me now? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you take the bread would you lift it before the Lord? As we just heard and we just remembered the story of the two disciples who were on the road to Emmaus, Jesus appeared to them, but they did not recognize him. The resurrected Jesus appears to them, but they did not immediately recognize him until the breaking of the bread. Where you are, would you just take your bread and no matter how small it is, would you do that? Would you just break the bread? And the Bible says that Jesus blessed that bread. And so Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you again and we thank you for you have told us in your word that this bread is your body, which was broken for us. As often as we do it and partake of it, we do it in remembrance of you until you come again, we receive right now. Would you join me? And after the supper, the Bible says that Jesus took the cup and said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you. Jesus, we lift this cup to you. We consecrate it again, knowing that your blood, the spotless, sinless blood of the Lamb, is absolutely perfect and provides for all of humanity redemption and salvation. We partake of this cup together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now where you are, would you just lift your hands just where you are, maybe both of them. Lord, we lift our hands to you. And we even look down at our hands and imagine the nail print scars in your hands, the way it was revealed to Thomas and the way that even the disciples on the Emmaus Road saw it when you broke the bread. When you broke the bread, they then saw the nail prints in your hands. 
So Lord, we thank you for this, this reminder to us in Jesus' name. Blessings be upon you this week. May the Holy Spirit be with you. May you be ever mindful of the presence of Jesus Christ in everything that you do and everything that you say. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and all of God's people and all of the world. In Jesus' name, God bless you.